Hi everyone, my name is Mili. Welcome and welcome back to this channel. I'm so privileged today because I am hosting someone. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching my content. Thank you, my subscribers. I love you so much. If you're a returning viewer, thank you. If you're new here, it's a humble request. Kindly subscribe. Okay, guys, so today I'm hosting someone who is a mother, a student, and a wife. And she's not a Chinese. She's in a foreign land, but doing all those things. I would love her to tell us to kind of take us through her journey. How does he juggle all these things in a foreign land? Okay. She is a villette and she has a YouTube channel. It's a family channel. It's called Avilet Studios. Okay. If you don't mind, kindly subscribe to them. You say never let me go. So Avilet. <laughs> Avilet, you're welcome to this channel. Thank you so much. Could you please say hello to the viewers? hello everyone thank you for having me here okay thank you so much so Avilet, i understand that you're a mother and you're a student as well in this foreign land how do you juggle those things before we go there um, how many kids do you have i have four four children wow um when did you have the first born and where did you have them from uh the first born was from zimbabwe we are from Zimbabwe. So the first one came in 2013, August of 2013. And in October of 2015, follows the other one. Like still in Zim. Yes, yeah, still in Zim. Then we moved to China in 2016. Then we had a boy in 2020, a COVID baby. <laughs> oh, wow. Co Hi, COVID babies. Hi, COVID. <laughs> parents no high parents who had covid babies yeah. <laughs> yeah and finally we just had another one this year a girl yes okay so when you moved to china did you come with all your family members i mean with the fa with the husband and the kids or one followed after the other oh uh, well after a month my husband followed and then the kids followed after a year wow so you're all here yeah, we are all here. Okay. So, four children, and you're a student, right? Uh, which course are you doing? I'm doing international film production. Okay. And you're a mother. So, I want us you to take a, I want you to take us through the journey of motherhood and student in a foreign land. Meanwhile, not just a mother, a mother of four, and a wife. <laughs> This lady here has a beautiful husband. It would be an understatement to say a handsome husband. It's he is a beautiful husband. Hey, if only you could see him. I um, I'm privileged to look at him. Anyways, so how do you juggle these things? Being a wife to a beautiful husband, uh, being a mother to four, and a student as well. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So right now, I don't know where to start. <laughs> okay, let's begin from how do you juggle with motherhood? Wow, motherhood in China is not easy. Especially motherhood and being a student at the same time. Being a wife is not that hard because my husband is that supportive. Guys, please, men, if you're watching, just copy, copy, take some notes, okay? <laughs> Yes, but being a mother and being a student is not easy. So I live far away from campus. Mm -hmm. uh, though I, I, I wouldn't really say that COVID is a blessing, but to some extent it has been a blessing to my family, mainly because we have been studying online for a very long time. Wow. So that gave me the chance to have more time with the kids, to be home, as much as I'll be studying, but you know, I'm in the home environment mm -hmm. and I can do whatever I want, I can watch my kids and everything. Mm -hmm. So it really hasn't been easy, but we thank God. Could you please uh, tell us some of the few challenges that you faced with motherhood in a foreign land? Uh -huh. mm. If you talk about challenges, then you'll spend the whole day talking. <laughs> Just Honestly, list a few of them. China, I know. And China is the home of challenges. Oh. Really? 
Oh, wow. It is for foreigners. It is especially foreigners with children, wow. especially also during the pandemic. It wasn't easy at all. So the first main challenge that we encountered, that I encountered as a mother, was giving birth in China during the COVID era, the pandemic. Because my third child came during the pandemic, and it was that time when it was just starting. Mm. And there wasn't much awareness. Um, uh, you know, it was that time when whenever a black person was seen walking up and down you have the covid you, you carry the, the COVID, covid yourself you are carrying it so having to go to the hospital and this is my first time giving birth in china mm. i don't even know how to go about the process and i'm a black lady i i, I don't really like calling myself a black lady because really it is wrong but um if i can put it that way mm. so it was a challenge because the nurses themselves were scared of black people. Is it that they are scared or they are racists? Because those are two different things. Mm, with my second experience giving birth in China, I wouldn't really put it as racism, mm. but is lack of awareness. Because I think it was more like um, a rumor that was circulating that I don't know where it came from that black people are carriers of COVID-19 but they themselves cannot fall sick but they can transmit oh. it to other people oh. so with my second experience it was fine oh. it was fine yes so giving birth in China during the pandemic was not easy and also the part that, um, you know, you have, you have not given birth. If you had, you would understand. That time when the labor contractions start and you really want to do everything that you can to relieve the pain, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But it is a time when you have to keep your mask on the whole time and you have to push that baby with a mask on. Yes. Please um, give us throw more light. Is it yeah. only with the foreigners or even Chinese? No, on this one, it wasn't only about the foreigners. It was for everyone. Oh. You had to keep your mask on the whole time. But with the second baby, I didn't have a mask. So you see the difference. Like I was gasping for air. I wanted air, but I could not put down the mask because it's policy you have to have your mask on please tell me you pushed you successfully pushed by the grace of god yes. hallelujah Amen. yeah and the other challenge uh the other main challenge is about the kids schooling in china mm. because schooling is really expensive so you find out that most uh foreign parents will end up resorting to homeschooling which is also not convenient because they have to work, they have to go to school. So in most cases, it's very, very difficult to find a cheap school for your mm -hmm. child because um, these mm -hmm. public do accept foreign children, but don't really. They do, <laughs> but they don't really. Yes, it's very difficult to find a school, a public school, and yet international schools are very expensive. Okay. Yes. So with those parents who have to homeschool, that means you have to find a, a nanny who mm -hmm. will supervise mm -hmm. the children. Mm -hmm. And having to pay mm -hmm. the nanny mm -hmm. is also another big challenge. I it's know. very expensive. So that is another main challenge that we have been facing in China. Yeah, it has not been easy at all. But still, by the grace of God, you guys are managing. I want to Thank think God. that you guys are managing. Thank God. <sighs> Meanwhile, this lady here can speak Chinese fluently. Let me mention that, guys. Could you please just just say two or three sentences in China for my dear viewers? <laughs> what can I say? Um, can you just tell them, hey, guys, can you please subscribe to our channel? And I'm glad to be here. Uh, what's the most funny? Go to our social media. Go to our. 
What in Buddha? Nitching good dong, ma? Timbo dong. You may sure she's young with ma. Idian, Dian. Ah, what's your weather? Nishens I play Shweshaw, Shweshi Jong Wen, you know, Jong Wen, she Fei Chang, Fei Chang, important. Guys, for your information, she's telling me that as a foreigner, it's very important to learn Chinese in China. <laughs> You're welcome, guys. Okay, please let's move on. Is there any other challenge? Ah, like I said, if mm. we have to speak about challenges, then it will be for the whole day. For the whole yes, day, yes, but for now, we thank God for life. Okay, so if you relate those two, um, being a mother with all those challenges and then a student, mm -hmm. um, do those two have any challenges combined together? Do they have any challenge, like being a mother and a student? Of course, of course. If you are a student, you don't earn any money. You know, having to take care of the children, the family, you need money to do that. That's why I salute yeah. to the beautiful husband. <laughs> <laughs> the way you say it, you make me blush. <laughs> He's a beautiful man, guys. Ah, <laughs> oh, Millie. <really? laughs> so now you're marketing my husband. <laughs> no, he's taken. Meanwhile, he's taken. He's married to only one wife. One beautiful wife. Oh. <laughs> one beautiful wife. Uh, yeah. Um, so um, having to study, having to take care of the children is mm. a very big challenge, honestly. Mm. Yeah, because you need resources mm. to do that. Mm. And also besides resources, you need time to be with them. But sometimes the schedule is just too tight for you. If you compare being a student back home mm -hmm. and a mother, I want to believe that you've ever been one. Yeah. A mother and a student back home. Yes, I was. Uh, if you compare it with being that same person here, mm -hmm. what are the differences? so many differences you know when we are back home you always have so many people around to help you mm -hmm. you know back home even if your parents are not around but there's that kind neighbor who can just do that for you but here you have to do everything by yourself yes you have to do everything by yourself so also back home uh attendance like university attendance is not that of a big deal unlike in china because in China, if you miss certain number of classes, then your visa is automatically yep. cancelled. Yep. So you have to attend classes. Mm -hmm. So back home, you know, I can I can just see. Okay, I know this module. I can read on on my own. There's really no need for me mm -hmm. to be in the class as long as you do yes. the final yes. exam. As long as I do my assignments and all. But here, my sister. Let's leave it there. I get it. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much. But uh, I want us to conclude with uh, what are those uh, advantages? What are those things that you feel like, yeah, I'm blessed to be a student and to be a mother in a foreign land? Is there any good part of it? Is there anything that, that is good that comes with being those two yeah. in a foreign land? Yeah. The great part is that I don't struggle with Chinese language because my children can speak perfect Chinese because of school. Oh, yeah. So whenever I need to do something or to say something, mm -hmm. sometimes I don't know how to say it, mm -hmm. but they're always there with me mm -hmm. to, to, to help. help out. Yes, to help out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even the father is as like, oh, well, what are they saying? Oh. And the child has to translate. Wow. So that is coming mm -hmm. from the fact that I am here with them. Mm. They are students that are going to school and they are studying uh, in the local language. And I also have to do some uh, everything in Chinese at school. So I kind of have that balance, yes, when it comes to proficiency. Mm. Because one thing for sure that is very, very difficult in China is mm. the language. It's a great uh, aside from learning Chinese and the advantage of Chinese, there are any other okay. Things? Uh, with that, I, I can speak about uh, the, um, the field that I am in, mm -hmm. so I'm mainly into filmmaking, and it's a great advantage in China to have foreign kids mm -hmm. who can speak Chinese mm -hmm. because, according to my field, I do not have to go about trying to 
find people whenever I have a project, mm. I can just use my team. Mm. I don't know if using is the right term <laughs> to, to, to use here, but I can just pull you. in mm. my children, mm. yes. So it's a great advantage to me, honestly, yes. Thank you so much. It has been nice to have this lady. I hope um, you learned something and I hope you get you pick some information out of what she has shared. Uh, do you have any last word you'd love to give out to my viewers out there? Yeah, uh, maybe I can say it feels good to be in China with your children. So in as much as we face challenges every day, but you them. when you see them, you are happy. Yeah. So in case you want to bring your children to China, do not be scared. Do not be scared of bringing them just because Avilet said mm. it's hard. Of course it's hard, but it's doable. Mm. Yes, as long as you have the right paperwork, I think China is good. Yes. Thank you so much, Avier. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, this marks the end of our video now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment in the comment section. What would you want me to talk about next time? What would you? Uh, what have you learned from the lady that she has shared? Um, do you, would you want to come to China? Would you love to bring your family? Anything that is of value. Put it in the comment section down there. Thank you so much. It has been nice having you as yet. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. All right. Until next time, don't forget to, pra to practice kindness. Bye.